Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chella and this is Chella Reads a Bit. Today I'm going to be bringing you a list of my fave books of all time. These are mostly like standalones because I th think I'm going to do a video where I do like series, even if I haven't finished a series, like you get what I'm saying. So these are most, these are I think all standalones. Just got my handy dandy note book that I wrote it down in. Just a disclaimer, a few disclaimers. Uh, before we get into it is one still don't have a microphone hopefully i'm going to be getting that soon fingers crossed so sorry if the audio isn't very good again i'm going to try to do what i can when i go to edit to make it a little better so just bear with me for the time being i really appreciate it and second disclaimer is oh, some of these are books i haven't reread in a bit so they're favorites as far as i you know when i read them haven't some of them I have reread and might not like now, which maybe I'll do a, th a thing where I reread some of these books or other books that I've given like five stars or what have you and see if they still hold up. But that's a different conversation for a different day. But so these are like some of my all time faves, all time fave standalone books as of right now. Some haven't read. Really Just take it for what it is. These were my favorites at the time I read them, and I still hold they still hold a place in my heart in a way. So even if they might not be favorites now, once I decide to reread them, and then you know we'll talk about it. But I have a list of seven books. Um, most of them I don't have with me, so I will pop up a picture somewhere. Um, but I'm going to be going from the bottom of my list to the top. Technically, they're not in any particular order, but most of the ones that are more favorite, I'll let you know, but they're mostly at the top. So, before we get into that, if you do enjoy my videos, please feel free to like and subscribe. I would love to have you here, and it really makes my day. So, uh, let's jump right in to my favorite standalone books. So, the first one I want to talk about is A Midsummer Night's Dream by... William Shakespeare. Yes, I know. It's a play and whatever. But I actually, it's like one of my favorite plays other than like Julius Caesar, but I didn't put that on the list because one Shakespeare is enough. So Midsummer Night's Dream is a play written by William Shakespeare. It's very whimsical, very funny. It's one of the, I think like a co co comedy it is very interesting. There's like not a love triangle, but more like it's the story where the person likes someone, but that person likes the other person, and that it's like keeps. It is storming here, so if you hear that, I'm sorry. But it's like that kind of thing, and it's funny, it's it whimsical, it's very weird, very out there, so I enjoy it. If you haven't read it, I would recommend. But if you don't like plays and you don't really care for William Shakespeare, then don't. It is what it is. It's one of my favorites. I loved reading it in school. That's where I read it. And I, it stuck with me. And I have a copy back in the U.S. that I don't have with me. But I still love that play. So that's one of my favorite standalones. The next one is actually a book that I kind of read simultaneously with my brother. Not on purpose, it just sort of happened. So the book is The Book Thief by Mar Marcus Susak, and it's because my brother was reading it for class, and I just started reading his copy, and I've read it kind of together with him. I mean, I, I think I finished it before he did, but I really enjoyed the book. It's like set in Germany, I believe. I don't remember exactly. It's been a bit. It's like been a long time since I read it, but it's it's a very it's set in World War Two. This girl is wants to read, like starts to read, and it's obviously illegal, and it's just this it's it's just a beautiful story. Um, if you don't know, uh, even though I think I've talked about it before. I love learning about World War Two history. It's like one of my favorite things to learn other than languages and so it was just interesting reading that and like how books played a part in this girl's life and like the people who she interacted with and the narrator of the story 
It was very good. I I loved it. Like five stars. But um yeah, I think it also holds a special place because I read it a when my brother was supposed to be reading it for class and I, it was an accident that I started reading it and I just like picked it up and I was like playing around like reading it and then I just really got into it so that holds a special place in my heart because um, it includes my brother in it in a way he's not much of a reader in the sense of like fiction but he had to read it for class so it was it was a good time but do you hear that oh my god I hate storms why does it decide to storm right when I'm filming? Don't know. Of course it does. But anywho, so that is another favorite of mine. Totally recommend. I know a lot of people have talked about it. It's not anything new and extravagant that I'm talking about. It's pretty cliche to say the book thief sometimes, you know. Everyone knows about it. But I really enjoy it. And I know a lot of people are kind of tired of the whole World War II fiction books like I get it but it, it was great when I read it so top tier loved it so the next one is gonna be a little odd but like I just said in the past in the, in the one previous to this one one of my favorite things to learn is World War II history and there's a particular movie that I was obsessed with and still obsessed with so love just haven't watched in a while and my boyfriend hasn't seen and we will be watching at some point and this movie came out and me and my brother went and saw it twice together because we were both in, we were both interested in World War II history. This was said in World War II, like World War II, and we actually went and saw it twice. My dad was with us. It was a great time. Again, another thing that holds a special place in my heart. But since when I saw the movie, I got obsessed with the topic and like what happened, and I wanted to learn more about it. So I found this book. And it's called Dunkirk Retreat to Victory. And I know there's a lot of different mm, books about Dunkirk and stuff. This was just the one that I read and I really enjoyed it. And I don't remember who it's by. I'll have the book on the screen. But it actually, I read it cover to cover. At the same time I was reading um, PSS The Love You by Jenny Han, the second book in the To All the Boys I Love Who 4 series. And I actually found myself wanting to pick up Dunkirk Retreat to Victory more than I did that one. Which I know is weird. You can judge me all you want. Why would this book about the events that like led that led up to Dunkirk and what happened at Dunkirk and like everything that went into it be more interesting than a fiction book that seems more lighthearted? Don't ask me why, but it was I just found myself wanting to pick that up more. And I loved it. It was so interesting seeing like how they got the English got into this situation, what the French commanders were doing. It, it's just a lot to the it, it, it unpacks a lot. It might I don't know if it's like the best recording of this thing, but I liked this specific book because it's the one I read. And it really was something I enjoyed because it had to do with World War II. I was really into Dunkirk, still am. Like the story of what happened at Dunkirk, it's very interesting. I totally recommend it. The movie is Chef's Kiss. The music, the it, it is just a masterpiece. The way it has the three timelines that all converge into one. Of, it is just a masterpiece. I totally recommend the movie. It is amazing. It does embellish some things, but it is amazing. I still love it. And the book was really good. I think it really taught me a lot. If you can hear rain, cool. May it free ambiance for you. I personally, I like the rain, but I do not like the thunder. Mm -mm. But we'll move on. So next is gonna be one that maybe people will look kind of roll their eyes on and be like, huh? Who it? Why? Because I know a lot of people have issues with this book or don't like it or couldn't even finish it, and I totally, I totally acknowledge that there's problems and that maybe it's not like the best, and it doesn't make sense, and like the, the love interest is not the best. It's kind of uh, might have its problems. Totally acknowledge. Totally agree. But, you know, these are some of my all-time faves, and I really enjoyed this book. Maybe I want to call it a 
favorite, 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 but it's still one that I really enjoy. So that is going to be uprooted by Naomi and Novik. So yes, I know there's problems with it. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I enjoyed my time reading it. I, I guess I'm like one of those people who are maybe in the minority. I don't know. Do a lot of people like this book? The people I watch seem to not enjoy it. But I really did. I thought it was interesting. I don't mind like a slow plot or like where it kind of takes a bit because I don't know I'm not much too much of an action person I don't really care for fighting scenes and all that other stuff I'll read books to have it but it's more like the character and the build up and all this other stuff that goes into it and like the character relationships and all that other stuff and like I thought that I really was interested I really enjoyed the dynamic between Dragon and and her, even though I know it's pro a, a problem, I know it's a problem, but I enjoyed it. And I will not be able to explain to you what the book is necessarily about. I just know it's about a girl who ends up having magic and is taken by this guy they call the dragon, I think. And, and that's all I know. That's all I remember because, again, I need to do some rereads. I haven't reread this in a long time. And I left my copy that I got for my sister back in the US. So I'm gonna have to wait till I get either a copy or I get it from the for the Kindle or, or for my library. Again, it might not actually be a favorite anymore, but at the time I it was a favorite. And I wouldn't say I totally recommend because obviously people have their issues with it. But you know, I enjoyed it and that is all that matters. We'll move on. So next is a monster calls by Patrick Ness. So this one is a very touching one that my sister actually ended up accidentally getting two copies. She got a hardcover and a paperback, so she gave me the paperback, and it's like the illustrated one. It's a stunning book. The illustrations are amazing, and it really adds to the story, so I really recommend reading it with the illustrated version more than just the normal novel by itself. It was, like when I read it, it made me bawl my eyes out. And I'm not much for, of someone who reads really touching stories, um, but when I first read it, it was, it was amazing. It was so well written. I thought the concept was so, like, well done and, like, it was so unique in the way, for at least for me, in the way that it was done and how it handled a certain topic. And if you don't know what a Monster Calls is about, it's about a boy whose mom you know is sick and it's him being visited by this monster and he asks him to tell him well the monster is going to tell him two stories or three and he has and then the boy has to tell a story of his own at the end it was so good so i'm sad that i don't have my copy it's back in the u.s which i hope they will be able to send to me um if i can't find a copy here but I loved that book. It made me bawl my eyes out. And then the second time I read it was, it took me a bit to be able to read it again after, like I think I reread it one more time. And then personal thing, like something in my personal life happened that was very close to what happens in the story, just not with my mom. Um, that would have been, but my grandmother passed away and it took a long, t it took a bit for me to be able to read that again after that point because it hit too close to home in some ways. So I, and then when I reread it after that, it like hit even harder. So it, it holds a really, really special place in my heart because of that. And be it, because it, I could understand the story even more after that and I totally recommend this book. I know some people don't really think it's as good but to me it really it really hit and I recommend. This was definitely a favorite, an all-time favorite, probably will always be. Then after that is one that I've talked about before, I've raved about, I've read in a vlog before and it is Old Magic by Marianne Curley. Of course I had to bring this copy I've talked about this book, I've raved about it, but it is one of my all-time favorites. My sister actually 
gave this, well, she wanted me to read it. And then she didn't want it. Like, I loved it. So I kept it. And I still reread it to this day. I reread it numerous times. It is so good. I love it. It is com uh, like a comfort read. I love listening to um, Megan McCauley's album that I don't remember the name of, but I will try to pop a picture because I've talked about it before. But that album really works well with this book, especially the songs Wonder, um, Reverie. It's at like a certain point in the book, those songs like hit really good with this book and they like work perfect. But I, it's just a book I reread all the time. It's not like the best literature. It's not something that you're gonna like write a literary paper on, but I totally recommend it. It's like cheesy. It, it's not like cheesy, but it's like cliche, stereotypical. It's not anything that extravagant, but I love it. It's one like that. I really fell in love with back when my sister gave it to me years ago, and I still enjoy it, even though you would think that I wouldn't, but it's just, I just, I can't, I can't give it up. And I totally recommend it. It's about a girl and a guy, Jared, and Jared and Kate. Kate is a witch, but she doesn't want people to know because she and her, her grandmother are like the outcasts in this place. And he, Jared moves there after they him and his family are having these string of like bad, this bad luck. So they come to this town and it's them, like Kate trying to help him with some things and like helping him in a way kind of branch out from his, this, he has this mindset where if it doesn't, it, it, it has to work in his, in reality. If it doesn't follow that, then it doesn't, it's not something that exists. And she's like, well, buddy, that's not true. There are other things. And like, it's just, it's just so good. There's magic and all sorts of stuff. So I totally recommend, again, don't go into it thinking it's going to be the best thing ever, but it's one of my favorites. It's, it's a special place in my heart. If that is the phrase for this video, it's a special place in my heart this book, which I've already talked about before, but totally recommend Total Faith. And then last, but certainly not least, is a book that I've had, I have many copies of, not with me, I can only bring one, but I, back in the US, I have numerous copies of this book. I love collecting it. It's actually two, like technically there's two, which you could buy separate, but I prefer them as like, in the bind up of both of them because you wouldn't think that there's two books but there are. It is one of my all time favorites. And that is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and also Through the Looking Glass, which are two separate stories technically, but this has two, both of them in it. So this is a copy my sister got me for, I forget if it was my birthday or Christmas one year. And it's stunning. It's a stunning, it has the French flaps on it, you know. French folios. Um, so of course it had to be the copy I brought. If I had to bring one copy, it was gonna be this one because it's special to me. My sister got it for me. It is a beautiful edition. And it is one of my all-time favorite books. I've reread this these technically two stories in many a times. The Disney adaption, the animated Disney adaption is my favorite one of my favorite Disney movies ever. I rewatched that movie so many times it's not even real. I know the words by heart. So of course I read the book, loved it. Um it's by Lewis Carroll, which is not actually his name, it's a pen name. Don't ask me his real name because I forget. It's like a German or something name. But I love this book. I know a lot of I know a lot of people don't enjoy this book, but I do. And just, I'm gonna reiterate, it wasn't a, a, a video that I've done recently that I mentioned this, but I do not like the Tim Burton adaption of the, of the book. I don't, adaptation, adaption. I don't like the Tim Burton version of Alice in Wonderland. I hate it. It, it just is, too much, it's too, too extra for me. This book is whimsical and nonsensical 
on purpose and and I know that I know a lot of people don't like it for that reason it's very like I said whimsical and nonsensical and doesn't make sense and it, it's a lot I get it but I don't like the Tim Burton version it's too too much I didn't like it I didn't like what they did but that is neither here nor there but I love this book. I, again, love the Disney version. And then when I read the book, the book was great. I loved seeing Alice's adventures through Wonderland, the antics that she got up to, her trying to find her way out. And I love the Cheshire Cat reading more than what you see in like the Disney film of like the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, the Dormouse. It is great and then you know you have also the Jabberwocky in this you have the Jabberwock Jab Jabberwocky Jabberwocky everywhere and then you're like Humpty Dumpty you have a lot more in this story like in these two stories because you get Alice's adventures in Wonderland and then you have a story through the looking glass which is a continuation pretty much of the story and it is just it is just and this edition is just words but th this book just means a lot to me because it again when i was young i watched the disney version the disney animated movie so many times made my mom and sister sick and then when i was able to read the book i'm like this hit this spot like it, it maybe <clears throat> I like whimsical and I like nonsensical the way it's done in this book and maybe that's weird to some people but this is just an all-time fave because it again has a place in my heart because the Disney version like the Disney animated movie was something that I grew up with and then the book added a lot more to that because it it adds a lot. There's a lot more to it than what you see in that. And it's different. And it has layers. And it has a lot more going on. You, you see a lot more of the characters. Different characters that you don't see. You see more of like a... You know, a bad... You, you have things that are going on that you obviously don't get in the Disney version. So it's fun. It's fun to read. I know some people don't find it fun, but this one is an all-time fave, and I will hopefully continue getting more editions of it, getting my editions from the U.S. so I have them here to show. I just love this book, and I do enjoy all of the books that I've talked about. Some of them I do need to reread to see if they're really still all-time faves, but as of right now I'm gonna consider them faves but that is pretty much it for this video I hope you enjoyed learning about some of my favorite standalone books hopefully I'll do one about series and all this other stuff but I hope you enjoyed it if you do enjoy my videos please feel free to like and subscribe I would love to have you here and I'll see you in my next video bye